So I am part of a, I'm part of this Seattle music scene that that now is is a legendary thing. You know, it's been 20, 20 years where the Seattle music scene has been a, a thing that exists in people's minds who live in Germany, say. You know, if you're living in Stuttgart in Germany and you're a high school student and somebody says Seattle music scene, you go, oh yeah, yeah, I know what that is. Uh, because there have been so many bands that have come out of here. But there's a Seattle music scene that is this constant churning animal and nobody ever, nobody knows exactly what it is. You know, lately we have produced the Fleet Foxes, and we have produced Head and on the Heart, and we have produced all these bands that are uh, what you would describe as neo-folk music, which five or six years ago nobody saw coming. Everybody was trying to sound like Death Cab for Cutie. And the people that were making this, this other kind of stuff were like, who are these? Who are these hippies? Now, it, now it's the Seattle music scene, right? It's what it means to people in other places. So I've been a member of this music scene for a long time, and I'm, I guess, a kind of an old, an old survivor. Um, I'm 44 years old, and I've been here since I was in my early 20s. Uh, and still, you know, still trying to make music, or making music as a as a thing, as a like, as part of living a creative life, I guess, rather than than uh, being caught up in the kind of like what's hip, what's now, you know, like Gangnam Style is now. By the time I wrote a song like Gangnam Style and recorded it and had it out, eh, people would be like, yeah, "That sounds like Gangnam Style. That's hilarious." That was six months ago, dude. <laughs> So there's nothing there's nothing to be done about it. I can't be I can't try and be cool. And that's that's hard because of course people your age are the prime consumers of music, you know? And it's because you're at a point in all of your lives where you've gone from being kids, which where kids kids emotional life is a thing that they don't have any comprehension of or handle on. Kids have emotions and they're just like <laughs> and then you get to be a teenager and you start having emotions and you start being able to... Jim Agnew, please call the main office at 7200. Jim Agnew, please call the main <laughs> office at 7200. You start to be able to apply your intellect to your emotion. And you do it with varying skill, right? Adults do it with varying skill. There are people my age who do, who do not have the ability to add their intellect very well to their emotions. But, you're, but it's happening in you, you know? And this is what music is. This, is. this is the primary gift of music. It is the art that is best at combining emotion and, and intellect. You can listen to a song and it makes you cry and you have no idea why. Because the, the lyrics are talking about Satan. Or, you know, or like whatever, if, you know, like they're, they're metal dudes where all they listen to is music that sounds like cookie monsters yelling at each other. <laughs> and they listen to it and they're just like, oh man, it's so true. <laughs> you know, they get like really, really emotionally engaged in this stuff because music has this, it combines these, it combines words, it combines these harmonic levels that we don't know why they make, them, make us feel like they do. But... When you get to be old, like as I'm sure, when you look at your parents and you think about their music collections, they're listening to a lot of music that they, that they discovered when they were your age, right? They like the music that they, that they liked when they were 17. And it's the rare person that gets to be 30, 40, 50 years old who is still open to discovering new music with that same passion. And it's because, as they've gotten older, the complexities of life don't seem so complex anymore. They get stuff, they start to figure it out. They get kind of, they get their routines, they figure out how they're coping with their feelings. And they don't need music in that same way. They don't need, things aren't as crazy and they're not, they're just not discovering life with that same passion. 
And as a musician, that's, it's hard for me to bridge that gap because I want to communicate to you guys. But there are a lot of people competing to get their music to you, right? There are a lot of people not very much older than you, 22 year olds who are like, I know how you're feeling and I have written this song about Pikachu. Dig it, you know? And depending on who you are, you're like, oh, Pikachu, that re I really feel that. You know, and I'm there like, I'm 44, I remember what it was like to be sad, kind of. And it just, it just doesn't relate. So it's a, it's, a, it's a creative challenge, and it's why you see so many bands, they put out two or three great records, and then their fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh record are terrible. And they've just, they've lost the, the immediacy of that. Like, I feel like this, but I don't know why. So a lot of my music, and, and part of it, part of why my first record, when I, when, I, when I was 32 and my first record came out, part of the reason it succeeded was that I, was a, I had a prolonged adolescence. I was 32 years old and I still did not know why I felt like this. I did not know why when I talked to girls, it was so universally unsuccessful for everyone involved. I could not figure out why I would say something and the girl I liked would say something and we would both go, <laughs> I don't think you're saying what I'm saying, you know, and I, I, I couldn't understand it for the longest time. And I poured that feeling into song. Um, I think a lot of people by the time they're 26 even are like, yeah, I kind of see what's happening here. I mean, I think a lot of people just, they, they say, I'm, I'm just not going to think about it anymore. I'm gonna, I got my job, I got my coffee in the morning. I'm just going to do what I do and hope that I don't get hurt, you know, that's a big part of people growing up, they think, not getting hurt anymore is a sign that they're grown up. Not so much. 